Okay, so I checked and um, the video, sorry, I checked on my machine and the exposures are fantastic now. So yeah, my real big problem was just a sticky, um, not sticky, but a uh, contaminated magnet. Um, they get a bunch of junk on them. When they get a bunch of junk on them, they will not hold. So this one was releasing right away. Usually I see them intermittent, but um, it's, uh, so it's working great. I just checked it on my machine. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna service the rest of it and take care of the um, ASA. So let's go ahead and take all this apart here. All right, so I always look on my speed dial. I wanna look and see if there's a set screw. This one doesn't have one, but a lot of these have a set screw right here. You need to take the set screw off before you try to get this guy out of here. So your rewind knob is going to come off. Um, you put your anything to block your fork from turning. This one I'm putting my tweezers in there. And you go ahead and you spin that. There's the little indicator that tells you which way to rewind the film. Well, you go the opposite direction. So as you go, we'll come up. Okay, so this is the newer style. You got the spacer, sorry, uh, spring washer. You got a spacer. And then shaft fall out the bottom, nothing to hold it in anymore. Okay, you got an E-ring. This E-ring here needs to come out next. So, you know, you can get an E-ring remover, but these pliers just work just as well. Pull them apart, E-rings off. Okay, plate, plate needs to come off. I push down, I can usually get an edge on the other side. That plate's off. That guy almost always looks ugly. I usually leave him alone, replace him if I need to. Big coil spring, gets coil spring out of there before it goes anywhere. Okay, that keeps the uh, rewind lock out. That's the inner, um, it's like, a, I don't know why they do it, but they have an inner, shaft and then they have this outer tube. Yeah. I don't know why they do it, but they do it. Okay. So the lock system needs to come out. Okay, got a shoulder screw. No shoulder screw. Gotta get in the right spot. That comes out. We're gonna have three um, wires to unsolder here in a second. screws okay so you got blue white in the middle and orange all need to come out try not to burn the plastic around it it's not the easiest to get to I know come on I really need it get a new tip on my soldering iron okay so once I get this I like to look and see how all these little serrations look this one's not bad it's got a little bend in one of them probably somewhere around 200 maybe 100 sometimes you can bend it back yeah that bent back nice so if any of them are broken that needs to be replaced which means you have to take this apart and you know get in there and replace it Okay, so the cover comes off with, on this one, two screws. Some of them have an extra screw over here. So you'll have this screw, this screw, and this screw. Tiny guy here. And this comes up, usually comes up much easier. Okay, so this is where people start running into troubles. Okay, you got an E-ring here. Okay, you got your wires are now loose. Okay, so your speed dial is here. Uh, ASA dial is here. Three screws. Okay, and third. Third was super loose. Just wondering. I don't think anybody's been into this one. Okay, so now I use a small little screwdriver and what I'm doing on this one is just kind of sliding it down in here 
and that's stopping this gear, white gear, from swinging back really fast. I just slowed it down. Okay, wires go into the little notch, pull those out. One wire here. Okay, so what I like to do on this guy, always check this surface right here. This is your ground. Always check that for oxidation. This one's in really good shape, so I'm really happy with that. But these get oxidized, something wicked. And people complain about fibrillating meter, um, plus minus jumping around, auto jumping speeds. It's this resistor, uh, sorry, this um, ground contact right here. If you need to clean the resistor, these resistors break from impact, any impact at the top. This resistor is a glass resistor. It will break, it will crack. Cracks can almost look like they're, this thing is perfect, but they can be broken. You'll see that in the speed dial. The speed dial will read like 2000. If it reads 2000 all the time, no matter what you input, then it's probably got a crack in here somewhere. All right, so two big mistakes with the amateur gets into this thing is there is a strange linkage. The string linkage goes down through the front, goes down, hooks around another linkage, then comes up and around. You jump this one down here, you're pulling the front no matter what. You will never get it back on again. If you pull the one under here, and it's really hard to see, you won't be able to see it with the camera. I can barely see it. That is a pain in the butt too. That's extra work. Um, so don't mess with it, okay? So once you get this out, if you really want to keep yourself a little bit safe, take your f-stop ring and move it all the way here. What that did is now you don't see the string wrapped around here. You don't have the you don't have the looseness on this pulley and this pulley down here, and they're not going to jump. So when you get ready to put this back on, I'll show you how to get this timed correctly. So what I'm going to do is, and this is um, alcohol, it's with a Q-tip, and I do like Q-tips for this. Q-tips can add a little bit of friction, and it's usually just fine for getting rid of oxidation. So I do that, and then I'm coming back with this. Okay, so this here is a syringe, it's full of oil. It's a red oil. I'm gonna put it on the contact. Not much. I mean, those are just barely overall a drop. And I'm going to rub it in. This is what's called deoxid. And this makes the contact much nicer. And plus, it has a little slickness, so you're not constantly wearing everything out. Okay. And I'm going to put some. This isn't a band of resistor here. Get this guy out of the way. So I'm going to go ahead and deox, deoxize, deoxize. I don't know. Put some deoxid on this. I'm not putting much. People get over enthusiastic with oil. Excess oil go, has to go somewhere. Usually it goes to places you don't want it to go. So be very careful with oil. Yes, everything in front of the resistor, uh, sorry, in front of the contact. Get this edge behind the contact too. Okay, um, it's in pretty good shape. This is, you know, the body's gonna pull this. So all this force here is what turns this system here. All right, I'm gonna do this real quick. I don't normally do it on all CLAs because usually I don't have to. Many people run into troubles with this. So what I'm going to do, take the screen out first. Put it out of the way. I'm gonna pull the front and show people how to clean this. Oh, I see this go wrong so many times. 
comfy. Ah, these things are just really loose. I can't quite figure out what's happened. Some things look like it hasn't been touched. Other things seem like there's a, been someone messing with them. All right, so I'm gonna pull mount off. Mounts off, springs out. Okay, so here's where I find most of my problems is usually if someone's been in and it's not me, this spring is lost. This spring is here. Behind it is a pin. And there's my string linkage. <laughs> so a pin and a spring. Okay. Since we have it out, we clean. All this dust and dirt out of it. Okay. Now this would be a big problem if I hadn't turned it all the way over here. If you if you'd had this and all the all the uh, um, string was wrapped looped around these pulleys, this could be a problem. All right. So I'm just trying to get this as clean. It doesn't have to be sparkling. I don't use grease on it. You can if you want to, um, but grease just attracts dirt. Nikon has never put any grease on it, so I tend not to. So wrap these string around in a way that does not bind. That sits down here, and I like to get the string like slightly loose, put it where it needs to be. All right, this guy here, he, everybody, hey, where does this go? Cut out, it's gonna go over here like that. It's just one of those things I've been going doing it forever. I know where the cutouts goes. I'm gonna put this in too. Pin first. Spring. This is a the uh, mount spring. Whoops, almost cut that in half. There we go. Mount goes back on line hole with pin goes down now, I don't know if I have this a hundred percent yet so put these on lightly and what I want to do is come up here spin this guy and as I'm spinning that, I'm making sure my f-stop ring in the front moved. So the f-stop ring is over here. So now I know I'm not binding anywhere. Um, I can tighten this screw down, this one down, and it's smooth. Don't tighten these until you make sure that system's smooth. Otherwise, you're going to break the string. And I have bought them off eBay. People tried to fix them, and those strings have been broken. You break the spring, you pull in the front which I think I will on this camera anyways. All right. I'm well, pretty much done with that. I'm gonna go ahead and solder this, this um, brown wire back up. to do something about my soldering iron because this thing is just it's the tip the tip is I love Hakos but this tip is shot I think I need a new, new tip because I don't like putting a lot of um, too much heat to this that is an insulator right there it's black and it's an insulator I've seen people melt this insulator and it really causes problems with the, um, the gamma. So the meter doesn't work right. I had one that was doing something. I can't remember what it was. And the person who got in there just burned the whole insulator out. All right, so this timing here is to move this all the way over. You feel just a little bit, it's pulling you back. and I go all the way 
goes right there and can't move anymore. It's going to be this little slot, and I just drop it down in. Now this should move about a millimeter. This f-stop ring should move about a millimeter before everything else in there moves, and it's doing it just fine. So that's where it's timed right on money. That's why I've always done it. Okay, so those are my two things that I normally do when I do a CLA. We know the orange is going to go over here. I don't know why they did this orange and the white are crossed. They're always crossed. So, um, okay, so another issue with these things, a big issue, um, I could have done it earlier, but I'll do it now, is most people know that this little light in the front doesn't like the light very well. It's pretty much universal. They don't like the light. Um, I'm gonna, but we will go ahead and take that apart and get that to um, to light. 